Hello everyone, it's John and uh, Pippin, aren't you? Yes, he's uh, <laughs> he's chasing chasing everything today. We've had a little bit of um, had some rain, some storms come through, and oh, what are you doing? Don't you go and be sick on me now? Don't you love my productions? Yes, everything's realistic. <laughs> what are you doing now? Come on, make up your mind. You're sitting on my lap. Yes, there we go. He's finally settled. Yes. So it's a waffle. A waffle video today. And uh, what am I going to be talking about? Well, October is uh, a bit of a busy month. We, uh, My wife and I celebrate our wedding anniversary. So to all those people who wished my wife and I congratulations for... It's 36 years, 36 years married now. And uh, that was uh, was very, very welcoming to get such wonderful words of encouragement from uh, a number of people that I know. Disappointing I didn't get some from some, but that's hardly something I wasn't expecting, to be honest. So the... Yeah, so life continues on. Geez, the uh, my wife and I had a, uh, shall we say, a uh, an incident-prone wedding. My mother lost my, sorry, maybe I should use the, my mother lost my wedding rings or the wedding rings for the day. So that was that was fun. Of course, you know, two minutes before I'm about to tear off. Yes, and go. Where's the rings? Oh, I don't know. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. And back in those days, we had a annual um, parade called Warana. And uh, it was on the day that the wedding was on. And, of course, we got stuck because I'm on the south side of Brisbane. My wife lived on the north side. And the wedding was at a church on the north side. So we had to sort of work our way around the traffic which uh, was yeah, it was interesting made us well didn't make us late but didn't give us a lot of time and uh, apparently my wife was so eager to uh, so eager to be married she arrived early at the church and uh, my mother-in-law was uh, exclaiming profusely to one and all that her daughter had been left at the altar and that I'd stood her daughter up and Ah oh dear, such such wonderful things, and of course, uh, once the uh, once uh, my wife had gotten up onto the altar with me, I I said to her, I said, look, I said, I don't have our rings; they've uh, they're not here. I've got some substitute rings for the day, and um, she obviously was far too caught up and excited I think on what was happening around her to actually be listening to me because however the look on her face when she saw that this isn't my wedding ring <laughs> when it came to put the wedding rings on ah oh dear if only somebody could have taken a photo that would have been um would have been a priceless a priceless photo for the day and of course the photographer that we had uh, he locked his camera equipment in the boot of his car so we had to no mobile phones back in back in my day and uh, so consequently uh, he had to ring up his girlfriend and get his girlfriend to come over with the spare care spare car keys to uh, to get the camera equipment it was but you know as I said to my wife we have so many things that we can still remember about our wedding uh, some things I can't remember, but, you know, obviously all these little things that went wrong that weren't really that upsetting, I guess. But it was just enough to make the day memorable. And so uh, I think it's far better to have a day that sort of, I think, filled with tribulations that aren't catastrophic, of course, but, uh, you know, things that, you know, a perfect wedding, I think, would have been dull and very boring. I think we'd have both forgotten very much about what the day was in the end. But yeah, so that's 
and of course my wife's birthday is in October as well. So my wife does very well out of October. She gets an anniversary gift and a birthday gift in October. Yeah, she does my, you know, she does very well. But then she's put up with me for 36 years. So I think she's more than worth spending some love and attention and uh, clearly some, some money on. So what else has been doing? Yeah, I've been cleaning up because we've, uh, I've been caught up with this Gaslands game. And uh, where's the, uh, have I got it? Oh, it's... <laughs> out of reach. Here I am stretching all over the over the screen. Uh, yeah, so caught up in Gasland. So I've been cleaning up my uh, hobby room next door, which sadly I've been using as a dumping, as a dumping ground. <laughs> but look, I'll show you what I did find. And uh, again, these were sold my the shop that my wife worked in. And there's these little Nintendo widescreen they call them game and watch well, i don't know what do you call them little handheld i don't know if they got an actual name they probably do but uh, i was quite quite pleased that they're still all in good i didn't leave the batteries in none of the batteries were left in any of these um any of these little little games so you know that one that one there was called fire where you've got people leaping out of buildings and you've got a little fireman with a trampoline running backwards and forwards. Then there was um, parachute, where you've got a rowboat, same sort of thing. You're moving your rowboat backwards and forwards to collect people who are falling from uh, from the sky. So that was that was that one. That was a Nintendo. Uh, the other one that I found was uh, Snoopy Tennis, and uh, that's just. Um, I can't quite remember what that one was. Just knocking tennis balls about. I think I can't quite can't quite remember playing this one too often. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was Snoopy Tennis, and then there was another another brand. Must have been in competition because I don't think this is a Nintendo one, or is it? I can't. This is the problem. You put black on. Um, you put black on on blue, and it's very very difficult to uh, to read. But this one here was called Space Walls, and it's like a uh, uh, I guess a uh, uh, Space Invaders type one, where you're just moving backwards and forwards and shooting incoming aliens. So I guess that was that was rather popular. But yeah, so I found those, and then some time ago. A friend of mine gave my children his old Tron game. This. Sadly, the box disintegrated because little children don't look after anything, but the game itself still works Still works really, really well. So, um, again, very, very simple, simple game from memory. And the nice thing about it is that the instructions are all on the back on a plate. So even though I don't have the box anymore or any of the other bits that might have come with it, at least I can I can give that a uh, a play. And I have I have turned it on. I've played it, and it's it works still quite well. So what else has come in? Oh, this week we had uh, a new. Oh, sorry, Friday we had the new D and D book come in, and um, yeah, look, it's. It's an interesting book. The adventures, I'd have to modify everything because there's so many things in there that I just find far too... Um, aren't suitable, I guess, for somebody my age and maturity to be wanting to run. So I would be making a lot of changes. The artwork... Um, yeah, look, artwork is subjective and I... I think there's too many butterfly wings. Like some of the artwork, you could have conveyed, you know, sort of the magical sort of essence without having to tack butterfly wings onto improbable. But, you know, again, it's all all subjective. And, uh, and I think in the end, it's not a bad book. Um, some of the sections, I think, are a bit condes condescending. 
but again that's really just I guess me and my age and the way that I would write and I think that uh, it could have been perhaps produced a little better to me it almost felt like we have put this in to pad out the number of words because you know again when I look at writing things oh, there's, here's me who's probably the master of verbosity talking about but yeah, that's the difference between myself when I do editor, editor work and I'm looking at manuscripts that people have sent me and uh, I question what they've written. And of course, you know, I'll go, well, look, this is a redundant, you know, you've duplicated this and why have you written it this way when you could have written it in one sentence with, with you know, with this context rather than... But again, that's... That's just me and my opinion. On the whole, I think it's a fairly decent, a decent book. Um, however, I'd have to make quite a lot of changes. But then I do do a lot of changes with the books that do come out because so many people today have access to to getting those books easily. So consequently, you have no idea whether or not any of your players have uh, obtained the book or have seen the book, read through, found out what the premise is, what they should be doing. So consequently, I always change all the adventures that I take out of uh, any of these uh, D&D books or, or any modules, to be honest, because I always work on the assumption that, um, pardon me, that the information has probably already been seen, perhaps. That's not a very nice thing to say, to assume that all players are dishonest. But it's... I find that it's easier to say that, look, you know... And I find that in some some places where I have run adventures for, for other groups, uh, some people get very, very cranky when you don't run the monsters the way they should be run. And... Uh, to me, it's, well, you've run across a mutant version. Because there are a lot of metagamers that are out out there who just farm the game and, you know, they go, oh, I know exactly how to defeat this monster if we do this, this, this and this. Well, you're not going to win if I've gone and changed the rules on it, are you? And But that's what it is, is that, you know, you need to put some mystery and some excitement back into your games by making quite a lot, <coughs> pardon me, of, of changes. So that was the, uh, that was the D&D. Uh, as I have said, I think, in previous waffles, my health has not been well, despite the fact that you see me as what looks like a cheerful and happy person. Uh, sadly, I'm anything, anything but... And uh, so I have been restricted to to home. I only go out if I've, say, got to attend doctor's appointments or if I've got to uh, go to um, to do our shopping. They're the only times that I I, I leave home at uh, at present. And I would, because I've made those changes. It's, it's interesting. Some people have been um, accepting and, uh, and others have not played ball and have decided to, uh, to take things. Oh, no, well, not take things, but anyway. That's neither here nor there. But the thing is, is that it is nice to know that uh, I have now found new people and more people who are prepared to come visit me and play games. I'm just finding now too that uh, I'm not coping, I guess, with, with evening evening gaming anymore. My uh, capacity to stay awake has, um, has not diminished, but clearly my capacity to be able to play effectively most people say, John, you don't play effectively, period. But it is, um, you know, I've literally had to cut down and, and stop. I've, I've now 
I guess this is me announcing that um, evening games are, are literally off the table for me now because I just uh, I, I just can't can't deal with it. And I think it's disingenuous of me to turn up, say, and start playing a game and then say, look, I've got to go home. Not that I am doing that, but, you know, I think that that's not good if you're playing a game and it's if it's a long one or something or something that's fairly complex and then to say two thirds of the way through the game go look I've got to go and you know of course that shifts the whole balance and, and play of how a lot of games do um, do pan out so if you suddenly have one person who disappears out of the game the shift in in um, not balance, but the shift in, in uh, the way people were, I guess, trying to score points or to improve their position. Uh, or, you know, if it's a resource management type game where, you know, sometimes it's I get resources for this and that. and yeah, It's uh, just one of those things. But look, for everybody who has been very kind and have come to visit me, and play me and play games with me and what I was even more excited about was that my uh, gang that I used to gang my friends um, from the uh, from the blind pig games club day um, have come back we've started to meet in person again and uh, which is wonderful because we only play during the daytime so that suits me magnificently and they came to my my residence last Saturday and we played oh I've got, now I've got to reach it look we played my city and uh, I I must admit I was a little bit hesitant at first because it's a legacy game and uh, Pat was the one who said look let's let's give this let's give this a try he said because I've got a copy at home and because um, it's one that you mark the board and like I think we started the um, ages ago we did the Machi Koro legacy that we never we never finished I think we might have played one or two games and then that was as far as we got but my city we started and initially I think uh, the lads thought it was oh geez this is very simple but then each um, episode that was added provided another complexity to the game and it just made this game sing so I found that the legacy version of uh, of my city uh, like we played 12 of the 24 episodes in one day like the lads turned up about 10 and I think they left just before five. So let's just say that's seven hours. We played 12 games in, say, seven hours. Which I think is the most that I think I can say we've ever done. And on my little board game stats app, my city is shot to the top of the ranks with 12 games played. Which I'm really, really chuffed about because normally I'm lucky if, you know, a game that I've got might get played two or three times during the year so to have one game that's hit 12 I thought was exceptional but look it was really really nice that the uh, that the chaps came around and uh, we had a really really good um, a really really good time and talking about that generosity uh, of, of others uh, I have now been given a fairly modern ish computer and uh, oh, I'm not used to the speed <laughs> it's magnificent so I must I must thank Leslie and uh, and as well as Jason for the um, for helping me with this uh, that has uh, made my life so much uh, so much more enjoyable now that I can actually look at getting onto tabletop simulator and probably playing some online games again not that I really want to not that we've started to meet again I don't want to shuttle 
or, or scuttled. Sorry, I don't want to scuttle the uh, the fact that, that we're actually playing playing games. So uh, yes, yes. So I guess that's one of the things I must say to others is that look. If you're in a position to be generous to other people, and I have been throughout my whole life, um, I've always been in a position that I've had a bit of wealth, and uh, and that, and I've shared it with others. You know, I've given people games, I've helped people out, and I've done quite a lot over my uh, over my many years of gaming. Of course, I may regret some of my generosity at times, but look, uh, that's probably just me being wishful, thinking, geez, I wish I still had that game sitting in my collection. But yeah, it's a. Um, but yeah, if you're in a position to be able to help others, do so without the thought of what you're going to get in return. You know, if you can help others that need to be helped, do it. You know, it's uh, it is good, particularly in this day and age. You know, I look at. See, it depresses me when I go looking on uh, social media and that, and I see uh, so many people posting. You know, oh, I've picked up this game. I've got this game, I've picked up that, and you know, and it's almost every week they seem to be acquiring something. And I'm thinking, um, geez, you must have a, I think I've said this in the previous video, you know, you must have a hell of a lot of money or a huge amount of debt. So, um, but then, you know, you people look, you know, what about all your stuff? Well, mine's accumulated over 40 years, not over 40 days. So uh, it's a slow, gradual um, acquisition for me. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, the same too with, um, you know, Kickstarters. I really do dislike Kickstarters. And uh, I know that there's arguments to and, to and against it. But I think for the most part, it generates a... Uh, I guess a bit of a elitist attitude with a lot of people when they can say, well, you know, I've got this Kickstarter. And then you see them, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are, spec are speculative purchases where they, you know, they'll buy the Kickstarter and hope that it might be something that they can make a lot of money out of. I suppose a good one would be, say, Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, I quite like it, but you know I'm not paying the second-hand prices, particularly here in Australia. You know I've seen people wanting over a thousand dollars for some of the uh, for some of the Kickstarter versions of uh, of Kingdom Death, and I said, you know, and I think and look at it, and I'm there going, well, look, it's a really really nice game. I like it, but I don't like it that much that a thousand dollars is worth paying for just one game, even with all its expansions and that. But I think it's I think a lot of it's due to the fact that it's miniature driven as well. But you know, you could quite easily do another edition which just has cardboard standees or a or God forbid in the early days of gaming where you actually had cardboard chits on a table. Oh sorry, on a on a on a map board to uh, to do it with. So uh, the Yeah, no, I think I'll leave it there. Look, I've waffled on, I think, long enough. Uh, his Lordship has uh, is doing well. We had a little bit of a scare. He's got, he had a skin tag on him. I took him to the vet because when I was, um, after he had his hair cut, I had, scare, you know, I had planned that he was going to go to the vet a fortnight ago. And uh, the week after, which was last week, we had a bit of a scare when I was I was uh, giving him a bit of a, a rub over and a, and a look, and I felt I felt this. What's this? And he's he's got a little skin tag on his on his elbow. And uh, when he was having his hair cut, 
Uh, the clipper must have just caught on it and it's aggravated it a little bit, but it's all settled down now. But you know, he's he's my uh, he's my best friend, and uh, according to if we converted his years to human years, apparently he'd be forty years old, younger, still younger than me. So, uh, but yes, anyway, we'll pop ourselves up. Oh, look at look at this indignant look. As much to say, Dad, oh, look at this, he's tired, you tired. Yes, he said, Dad, you just talk a lot of rubbish. Waffle on and hope that somebody listens to you. Anyway, well, look, everybody, thank you very much for, um, oh, dear, for, uh, if you've lasted this long, good on you. You deserve a medal. So, uh, until next time, signing off, the Honourable John.